by so quickly. How are y'all doing? I am ready for this year. I'm ready for new blessings. I'm ready to make God bigger than ever before. And guess what? This series is the perfect series for you if you are wanting to experience God like where all things are possible with Him in it. Doesn't that sound exciting? Even if you don't believe in God or if you are new to this walk and you're just kind of curious and exploring, guess what? God will honor that for sure. And so I'm so excited that you're all here with me. I'm Susan, by the way. If you if I haven't met you, welcome. We here at Search Life Fellowship value God's word and relationships and uh, just experiencing his power and his love and his grace. So if you are wanting all of those things and peace and rest and healing, then you are so in the right place. And I sure need that. This The year ended pretty well, I guess, but also, you know, things keep happening. So I already feel like this year is feeling a little hectic and a little crazy. So I am excited to find the rest here at Fellowship. And I am so excited for you to experience that too. So here we go. Uh, we're gonna pray and then get into the word. So if you all will close your eyes or bow your heads or just kneel even if you're at home um, or at a fellowship in person where there's space to kneel, I would highly encourage that. <laughs> so Heavenly Father, thank you so much for just a new day. I am so reminded that knowing you and knowing your son, our Lord Jesus, that we can become new creations um, and that we can let the old self go. And with you and your son, we can become new again. And it can happen in a minute. It can happen every second. It can happen every day. It can happen whenever we choose to include you. And so I pray during this fellowship of week one where we can get closer and closer to believing that all things are possible with you, God. Le kraya le babreyo se leva ba i sha leva po undreye ke khebe pa undreya le de eja e ke khebe le le lava umbureya vai. Father, you are the light in the world. You are. You set your son as the light of of man to be the light of man to be the light that we all needed so much in the dark. Without your son, Christ, we are we are in the dark, Lord. Without you, there is no path, Lord Jesus. Without you, there is no way to, to life more abundant. You are the more. You are the life, Lord. You are the way, the truth. And there's no one like you, Christ Jesus. There is, uh, there is no, that, no other one that compares to you, your love your compassion and how you look on the masses, how you look on the crowd with compassion, your tender mercy, your tender gaze upon us. We need it, Lord. We need your, your tenderness. We need your love upon us. And I just um, hear the Lord saying that he sees you, that he sees that you are weary and heavy laden and that you it's like you're grasping you know for the air and for the wind that it's just impossible to 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 grasp and that he sees um your desperate call your um your desperate need and that that he is the one that can fill you up that our lord god is a fountain of living water that never runs dry and that he um, can just, he's, he says to just reach out, you know, to him. And and even I see us, um, you know, holding our, our palms, our hands up like a cup and him uh, and his water, just his everlasting water, just flowing into that. And, and we're drinking from it and we're getting filled up. And it's, um, and it's, it's like so pure and, and and awesome and and nourishing that we don't need anything else and that we can keep our our eyes and our hearts towards him and him being our sufficiency and that he can absolutely 100 percent promises to provide for us amen and now we're going to hear some happenings here at search live fellowship we are so glad to have you for the all things are possible series Searchlight has an app that is here to help you stay connected to the church 
Stay up to date on weekly discussions, request prayer, and so much more that will help you to receive so much more. It's really simple. Type in Searchlight Fellowship in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and get connected to great people and great content. You want to know a really great way to see that all things are possible in this series is through the Searchlight Meditations. These are really great and short guided meditations that will help you soak up the word and the presence of God, all coming together to experience God in a way that you never have before, helping you to see what is possible with God when he speaks to you. As you're downloading the Searchlight Fellowship app, you can find these meditations under the meditation section in the app. Jump in and experience the presence of God today. Are you ready to start off this new year right? But to see how all things are possible? Well, here's the power of God's word with Pastor Nancy right here, right now. Enjoy it. All right, are you guys ready for all things are possible? Yeah! Wait for me to waste time because Let's try that one again. Are you guys ready for all things are possible? Yeah! Do you think that we have lots of people here, but anyway. <laughs> I want you guys to get excited right out of the gate because all things are possible. Now, just take a moment to think about that and how it hits your heart a little bit. Because I'm going to guess that some of you guys have lowered your expectations in life, mm -hmm. have gotten to the place of disillusionment, perhaps, and hurt or disappointment. And so you've just been in, I can't expect a lot. Like, I just expect small because I don't want to get let down. And I mean to tell you that this series, we're going to see that it's with God that all things are possible. It is true that there's so much not possible just in our flesh and in our own strength. Mm -hmm. Hey, we've seen that not work, right? Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of times. Everybody has in many ways where we have extreme <laughs> limitations as human beings, and not just as humans generally, but each of us have big limitations just individually, right? I can't sing at all. Like, you know, I do it anyway. But, uh, it's just not good, um, you know. So in this series, though, we're going to be just looking at so much more is possible with God and what that looks like. And I don't want you to be afraid to just start to expect a little bit in whatever areas that you have been let down or been hurt or disillusioned or disappointed, I wanna just invite you into considering looking at this because we're talking about doing this with the God of all creation. Now, some of you guys are here, don't believe in God yet, not sure. I love that you're here so much. I was raised an atheist, oof. I was raised an atheist. So, I'm, but I really believe, man, God's word says, seek and you will find. The fact that you were here and that you have opened yourself to even listening. I'm, I'm guessing that you're here probably because there's some places that you haven't had answers or that things aren't working. But how courageous of you to step out and try something new, right? And so I want you to just start to begin in, in, in big expectations of what God can do in this series. Every time we do a series, we see things that are mind blowing in terms of miracles, signs, wonders, radical life change. So anyway, you know, usually it's like under promise and over deliver. You don't got to do that with God. <laughs> you don't got to be like, oh, OK, let's well, set your expectations low with God. He says all things are possible. So let's take a look at our theme verse for this series, uh, which is in Mark uh, chapter 10. And in verse 37, and if you've never found your way around a Bible, that's okay. So some of these guys don't know their books of the Bible brilliantly either. Um, and sometimes I get messed up as well. But Mark is in the New Testament. It's about like two thirds from the beginning. Uh, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. These guys have, some of these guys have the same. If you find it, yell your page number out. You don't have to yell really, but yeah. Did you find it? Uh, Mark is only 490. 490? 490. 490. <laughs> 490 something. 490, 490 something in that Bible. Okay. That so uh, Mark 10 and in verse uh, 27, it says, it says, and Jesus looked at them and said, with men, it is impossible. But, but in contrast, not with God. For with God, all things are possible. God is able. 
God is able. I mean, and so it's not so shocking when you think about it. Sometimes it really even, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to take you to that verse of scripture because I'm going to talk too much and not look at what the verse says that puts it so much more excitingly than I can. Um, let's uh, take a look at Jeremiah. Uh, it's kind of like in the middle, if, um, going to the towards the beginning. Um, it's after Isaiah. So I already got to Isaiah, so I got to go back the other way a little bit. Isaiah, Jeremiah. Okay, I already started crying, so my nose is running. Not a good start, Nancy. Okay, don't look. Uh, okay. Don't laugh. No, you can laugh. It's okay. Okay, Jeremiah. Uh, and in verse, do you, do you got it? Yes? Yeah. Ooh, all right, Diana. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 32, and in verse 17, it says, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. I love this so much. This is a part of Jeremiah's prayer. And it's a great way because we're going to also talk about prayer that is powerful and that, that bears fruit and where you see signs, miracles, and wonders. We call that juicy prayer is what we call it. So, But this is some juicy prayer right here where Jeremiah is, is saying, Lord, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing, nothing, nothing too hard for you. So this is something great to look at. And it is in being in the presence of the creator of life. If there is, like, just think about this. If there is this intelligent being that made everything, which there's really logic involved in believing that because of how precise and how complex our life is. Just the things that we see on earth are just mind boggling complex, let alone our solar system, the Milky Way, the universe, <laughs> you know, it's just, so it's interesting that it starts out talking about, he made the heavens. You can, if you look at whatever this being is that made the heavens, like all everything in the universe that, you know, stuff we can't even see, like it's just, ugh, you know, um, that kind of thing. It takes your breath away. And then it says, and the earth, it helps to expect that all things are possible when we look at that and the vastness of it, right? You know, the, the reason that our expectations have been so low is we're looking at our very finite abilities, right? But how, well, every time I cast my eyes on how big God is in this, like the earth, every day when I'm in prayer, I like to kind of change it up. And that's why on our meditations, we have meditations on our app then that kind of leads you in the same way that I uh, start out my prayer, which is thinking about different things in the earth. Like, and every day I change it up a little bit, like hippopotamuses or, you know, <laughs> or like, you know, we just were spent some time in Hawaii, the gorgeous creatures of the ocean. And there's so many like that no human has even ever seen. Like they keep finding new things, you know, and it's just like, come on, the colors and how do fish know what to do? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just beautiful stuff, like little seahorses and they're, when they have babies, it's something to watch. It's just, I saw a horse being born on video. I mean, I'm sure lots of people have seen that, but I'm telling you, I watched it, right? And this horse, this whole horse with legs coming out, you know, the placenta, and there's no umbilical cord there like there is for humans because a horse couldn't do that. Like, it's kind of, I don't know. It's just like my mind. And this horse just comes out of the womb there and it's already starting to walk and it comes from not being able to breathe it, to breathing and what, I'm like, what? Whole legs. It just, anyway, that's just one of the things. So this, when you look at this, like think about this even, we're going to talk about this more in terms of Having prayer that's powerful, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I'm throwing it in there anyway. So a lot of times, when, for instance, when we pray, and we're going to look at why people have prayers that have no power, mm -hmm. right? Have you ever prayed, and it's a list of just things you worry about, mm -hmm. right? Man, how are you going to expect all things are possible with that? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just makes you more depressed looking at that because you're looking at all of the limitations and all of that thing. But when I start with thinking about, I am in the pre presence of the creator of all of life. Then when I start, you know, we're going to get into this more, but it just, there's a piece in that right away. Anyway, uh, let's, um, 
look at uh, Mark uh, chapter 9. We're going to be just looking at things that help us to see things bigger and what the possibilities are and what's available with God. Let's go back to where we were there. Uh, Matthew, Mark um, 9. And this is just, a, you know, yeah, so many things as far as what's possible. And this is about uh, Jesus in Mark uh, 9, verse 14. It says that, uh, and when he, Jesus, came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them, with the disciples. And immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running at him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I have brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples and they could not cast it out or that they should cast it out, but they could not. He, Jesus answered him and said, oh, faithless generation, how long will I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And he has often, and often he has thrown him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help, and, and help us. So this is, I can't even imagine, right? Like, here's a child since from from a child like he's having seizures but how terrifying beyond having seizures um this child's like almost getting killed the seizures are causing him to get thrown into the fire and into the water this can you imagine the terror right you're a mom like can you imagine what that would be like going through, right? Like you love your children to see this and the fear and all of that. And so the the man says to Jesus, if you can heal, right? And have compassion on us. And so um, Jesus says in his response, it says, um, uh, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So we're going to be looking at this at what's possible. So Jesus, he says, if you can help, Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Now, I realize we're going to talk about how is it that we can grow in our believing? Because if you've been disillusioned a lot, your believing's probably maybe non-existent, mm -hmm. right? But Jesus is saying, if you can believe, all things are possible. And so then it says, Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, which I can imagine him sobbing in responding, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. So it's just sort of, I mean, which also is just fascinating to me. I've also like thought about like, I, I really believe as best as I can understand because it, it kind of sounds different. One is, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So... I really believe that he it's it's that the father is that there's like I I believe what you're saying but I know I have unbelief help with that right like I, I believe that you're speaking truth sometimes it's like intellectually we might believe something but we're not expecting it mm -hmm. you know I've definitely been in that kind of a place too where it's like okay God's word says this intellectually I believe this like I, I had breast cancer a number of uh, years ago, it's 12 years ago, maybe. Um, and it's it's scary, you know, it's a scary thing to find out. And I'm like, I totally believe what the God's word says that healing's available, but I did not believe it was going to happen, mm -hmm. like in terms of healing goes, right? And so I, I can, this is how I relate to the guy. It's like, I believe it's true, but my Lord help my unbelief right now in this. Um, and so we're going to talk about that, too, in terms of going from a place of having fears or having doubts and how to move towards God. I'll tell you, if ever there's a time when you're facing some of these hard things, this is the time never to run from God. Sometimes it's tempting. 
to just shut down, you know, and, and disappear mm -hmm. like that. But that's just the wrong direction. And I, it, I had a fight in many ways, like getting bad news like that to not run, like mm -hmm. to say, no, I need you now, uh, Lord, I, I need you. And uh, I can't face this on my own. Um, and so uh, the short story of, the, of that was, um, I was just in a place of seeking, being on my knees, and just kept confessing the things that I knew God's word to say. And I knew I didn't have the believing for it to go away. But I felt, I just said, see, because the tumor that they had measured was just over two, it was like 2.3 centimeters, I think, when they measured it. And so anything over two centimeters, you need to have chemo. Mm. And that was the thing I had the most fear about. Like I just, my, another, I have had many friends of mine and saw just the things, the rotting skin and all of that. And I was like, oh my gosh, and how sick you get. Um, and so it's just like, if there's anything possible, like to mm -hmm. shrink that tumor, and, uh, but I was just like, God, you've been so good to me. I've seen your goodness, you know, in my life over and over. I've seen your goodness in my friends' lives. I've seen your goodness in your word and just kept being in that place of seeking. Um, so when they, they had measured it, you know, on the, uh, ultrasound and on the, <clears throat> on the x-rays and biopsy and all of that, uh, when they did the actual surgery, it came in at 1.8 centimeters. Oh, wow. They said they had no explanation for it and I did not need chemo. So mm -hmm. I, when I read this, that's how I felt when mm -hmm. I was in that place is like, okay, uh, I, I know it says that, mm -hmm. but did I expect it to totally go away? And no, I did not have that. I did not be in that believing. So we're just going to look at this and how we can move towards that to see more and more power of God and miracles in our lives. Um, and so anyway, it says in verse 24, it says, uh, uh, oh, no, we already said that. Help my unbelief. Verse 25, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. So I wish I, I you know what? They don't say how the father reacted after that or anything. I wish they did. A part of it was like, whoa, you ended the story there. Like they didn't like the, I want to know what the dad said. I wanted to see the look on his face or, you know, or some of that. But um, uh, super exciting. I've seen this also too, speaking of like this, there's, uh, although this, they're talking about this being spiritual, but it sounds very similar to people having epileptic seizures. And we had a really good friend of ours um, who w had epilepsy and epilepsy is supposed to be incurable. And so she was a part of our church and I've been going for a few years and s her seizures got worse. Like, you know, you'd think like she joined our, our, she was on our leadership team, joined our ambassador leadership training program and it got worse. And one, one month she couldn't even go to work. She was having multiple grand mal seizures every day so that she was, couldn't even function at that point. So she was in tears and she was at our house and talking about like, this feels horrible. And my husband just got revelation to lay hands on her and um, laid hands on her heads, blew on her head seven times and spoke some things um, that uh, uh, to, you know, to her in believing. And it's been, I think 15 years now, she's never had a seizure mm -hmm. since. And she was on medication. She stopped her medication mm -hmm. um, and never once, not one. And she, it's supposed to be incurable. So I'm telling you, like, all things are possible. Like, it's whatever it is, there's, there's nothing too hard for the God of heaven and earth. So all things are possible to those who believe. So mm -hmm. isn't it worth trying to move towards that, right? To grow yeah. in, how, in our believing and I want to, I'm telling you, I don't, my believing is not like I, I nothing to brag about. I'll tell you that um, for sure. Uh, but I, even in this series, like really want to move and move and move in terms of believing. So we're going to see too, that it's, it's having faith in God. It's believing in God, believing in God's word. Sometimes what gets confusing is people believe for things that aren't available from God. 
So we want to, we're going to be looking at this of what is available to pray for. Because sometimes people pray for things and there's like, pray for controlling somebody, right? Like, <laughs> God, I pray that I can marry this person. <laughs> Mind you, they're drug addicts and all that, but you're praying, you know, God, why can't I marry this person? Make them change, make them, you know, quit doing drugs or whatever that happens to be. Um, or sometimes praying for this specific job. There's many things like, uh, there's, God says he gave us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So anything that we really need for life, God's got it. Like I've seen God do the impossible in the area of relationships for me, for many of my friends, like romantic relationships. That's a, that's a big, I have a lot of believing on that because I've seen it. I've seen my friends have miracles happen um, in huge ways that never had, had nothing but toxic relationships their whole life. And God healed them. And they have like the best marriages ever, including me. Um, you know, and it just seems impossible. And so, and I've seen God heal physically. I've seen God transform people in having rich, purposeful lives full of meaning where people have gotten like, geez, just in this year, we've had people healed of lifelong anxiety where they went to therapists for years and didn't get healed. And they have never had a panic attack since. Like, you know, where it was like a regular, completely debilitating thing just so many things we've seen people this year get healed of stage four cancer like it like big 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 miracles all things are possible so i want to um just go in this let's go to romans 4 uh, matthew mark luke john acts romans this is kind of a record there's a whole bunch of verses on this and we're going to get into this more next week in terms um in more detail uh, but in Romans 4, this is the story of Abraham, who God promised him to have a child, him and his wife. They're both around 100 years old, not usually when people are popping out babies, like especially for the women folk. I mean, men, some men might be able to handle that. Women, not so much at 100 years old, but they had a baby. So, um, but it's kind of cool because Abraham is called the father of believing. So we can learn some things about what it is to believe God from him. So Romans 4 and in verse 20, it says he, talking about Abraham, did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. God promised it, and then he didn't waver on that promise with unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. In faith is believing, giving glory to God, which I think is really interesting. Giving glory to God helps our believing. Like it's what we talked about, who made heaven and earth. Being fully convinced that what he, God, had promised, he was able to perform. He was also able to perform. So one of the things that, that we're going to be looking at is you can't just believe anything. It won't work. I mean, we've all believed things that haven't happened, right? Or believe, have you ever believed a person and who wasn't trustworthy? Yes, 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 right? Definitely much, many, many, many times I've done that. Uh, I have been times where I have not been trustworthy. Um, but again, you can heal, you can grow. And when you're trusting God, it helps you to be a trustworthy person because you're trusting in God and not in people. So it helps you to be trustworthy, um, to have more integrity. Uh, uh, because you're looking at God to supply and not the people. Anyway, but... We can't just believe anything. It doesn't work. Sometimes people talk about like the power, like believing in and of itself. The power isn't in the believing. The power is in the object that we're believing in. It's God and also what God's promise. Like you can believe till you're blue in the face for things that God doesn't promise. That's, that is not going to happen. You know what I mean? Um, so we're going to get some clarity on that as well as how we can grow in the believing. But it's interesting in this section, there's kind of two things of one is believing that God's willing. That's that he promised something, shows you the willingness. And in his word, if it's in his word, then you know he's willing because God's word is his will. So, and then God is able, we can look at the heavens and the earth, like we said, to go, yeah, God can handle whatever I'm doing. And it's way smaller. Anything that you have that you're facing is smaller than creating the universe. Mm -hmm. Like it's smaller than creating an elephant you know, um, or what have you, any of those things. Let's close out in um, Ephesians 3. This is one of my very favorite 
verses. Uh, it's like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. If you hit uh, Philippians or Colossians, you went too far, or Thessalonians. So Ephesians. Um, <clears throat> chapter 3 and a verse 20. It says, now to him, God, who is able, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Wow. <laughs> Did little explosions go off? Like, do you know what I mean? All that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Wow, we have Holy Spirit. God put his, his spirit, his nature and in us and he works in us. That's kind of crazy too. We'll get into that later. But God is able. Like, again, this is going to look so different. Somebody, in every area of life, my expectations when I'm looking at my flesh are so much smaller, even in the area of my husband. Like, where before I met my husband, I was having, I don't know why I always bring up the romantic things, but, you know, had all these, I had, I had three fathers, all crazy, abusive so I didn't have a lot of expectation, right? Like no models of great relationships. So I got into all kinds of toxic relationships my whole life. And then, and so I started getting healing and, and I didn't let God into this. I was a Christian and that was an area of my life. God, I was like, nope, nope, nope. I, I'm doing it my way. God was not involved in it. And so when I just got desperate enough, I was like hurting so bad. And at my bottom, I was like eating crap, you know, my face planted in my crap. And then just like the pain was so overwhelming. And I was like, I, okay, the only way that's going to happen is I'm going to come to you. And I started letting God in this and started getting healing in it. And I think, I think about like my husband and like what I had in my mind was so much smaller. Like I was not even thinking I wanted somebody that walked with God for a while. I was just like, so long as they're nice, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it was just like, and I'm sitting there going, oh, and then, but I got a guy who believes God, loves God, super romantic. He likes to dance. I like to dance. He's funny. He's fun. He's sexy every day. I get lots of flowers. He's the most romantic guy ever. I mean, makes me feel like a million dollars. Like I'm 64, but he makes me feel like I'm some kind of beauty queen or something like that. And we've been married 23 years now. So it's just like, you know, we have a God that is, this is what I call, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, right? So I want to, we're gonna do a little bit of meditation and then we're gonna get into the workbook for a little bit for our first week. But I want to just do a meditation for you guys to just receive those words. So if everybody will close their eyes and um, just take a moment to just rest right now, to allow your body to just let go. And it says, be still and know that I am God. So to just take a moment in the stillness to notice that you are in the presence of the creator of the universe, this invisible spiritual being that surrounds you right now. And I want you to just think about some areas in your life that you have been let down and have been afraid to hope and just been disillusioned, disappointed, afraid to expect too much. And to just take a minute to take in the words. With men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. And to ask God right now to show you some visions or pictures 
of what's possible in those areas of your life you were thinking about with him. Take a minute to think about what God made, that you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you to think about the things that you see. What inspires you to help you to see how big and vast this creator is, this spirit being is? And with that in mind, to think now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think according to the power that works in you. Just take a minute to consider that and to set your heart, to open your heart, to expect to see that more and more over the weeks of this series. Father, I come before you with great thanksgiving in my heart for each and every person who's a part of this fellowship series, that you are a God of miracles, signs, wonders, and that each and every person here is precious to you, precious in your sight, that you have fought for them to even be here and to be in this situation to receive healing in all parts of their lives. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Amen. Okay, so um, we're going to read the workbook a little bit. So now let me kind of walk you through the stretch goals. On your week one, uh, we're just going to read the... Uh, we won't read all the details. It's called the Jesus Acrostic. We have five stretch goals that will help you to grow in seeing God more and to seeing that all things are possible. All these stretch goals are little bitty, little teeny bitty things. That if, you try, if you try them, there is like no risk pretty much at all, but it will blow your mind. It's supernatural. So why not? Sometimes it's just sort of, you don't want to go, well, what if it didn't work? But what if it did? You know, it would blow your mind because none of these are hard. They take like no time at all, but it's shocking because they're supernatural. What a big impact they will have. We call them also the Jesus acrostic to help you remember. They all, each one starts with the letter J-E-S-U-S. So the first one you can see there is juicy prayer and meditation. So I want to talk to you about what that is. Juicy prayer and meditation. It's, it's named that because God intended prayer to be exciting, not boring, juicy, juicy. Like it's just like you leave going, woohoo, wow, that was amazing. Where you hear from God and your faith grows more and it's fun and you feel filled up and you feel like, like so often it's shocking how many people go, I feel like I'm walking on clouds like all day after I spend time. So we made it easy by putting uh, some meditations on an app because I know a lot of times people have not been used to having a super exciting prayer life. So what these are is you go to the Searchlight app, you just download it, it's free. It looks like a little black star, black background with a little starburst in it. It's um, free and um, it's Searchlight Fellowship. And so if you open the app, they have under, they have on there at the bottom, they have meditations. Mm -hmm. And so you hit that, and then we have different topics that are 15 minutes. And all you do is you open them and you push play and listen. I really recommend when you're doing this to get on your knees. Like in the Bible, they speak about it helps you to experience the presence of God, to see how big God is. If you've never tried it, for many years of my life, I never prayed on my knees. I just thought that was ridiculous. And so I just, but then I started reading it in the Bible and I was like, oh. So I tried it. It means like child's pose kind of thing in yoga, you know, where you kneel, but it's like 
your hands are forward. So it makes you experience being small and helps you to see the vastness of God. I, I know it sounds shocking, but it actually does make a big difference. So if you haven't tried it, again, why not really? What on earth? I'm, I'm 64, I got some bad knees, but I still, I'll get a pillow, you know? And maybe I can't stay down there forever or anything, but they're only 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So the way that they're designed is first it helps you to take a look at how big God is, kind of what we talked about in the teaching, to see the vastness. And then it has periods of silence where you ask God to show you different things. Now, if you're not used to this, don't worry. Your mind will wander a little bit, but it's totally fine. Um, it, 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 the more you do it, just 15 minutes a day, you start noticing that you get peaceful right away. Like right now, as soon as I get on my knees, I experience his presence. I feel like instant peace. It's crazy. I, I know. Like, it's just at the beginning, I was like, oh, two seconds. And then I'm like, oh, I'm thinking about my to-do list all mm -hmm. of a sudden, right? That's normal. You're not unusual. But if you just try it every day, you'll be shocked at how soon you just, your mind starts getting quieter and quieter. So there's little periods of silence in it. The beginning, maybe not as long of a period to ask God to show you things. So you want to be kind of curious. Like if you see a picture, don't be going, that can't be God. Don't just go, what if it is mm -hmm. God showing you? Maybe you hear a word or something like that. What if God's showing you things? So it kind of helps you to expect that prayer shouldn't be just you talking at God. It should be you actually experiencing his presence and hearing from God in it. So it has some time of being in the presence of God as well as in the presence of Christ. So those are the meditations that are a part. That's our juicy prayer meditation. Then E is eating and living God's word. So um, we have different ways to do this, but it's just about making God's word like a part of your thinking and your life. And we'll have like little stretch goals, like picking a verse or, you know, and, um, uh, and saying it out loud or just just different stretch goals that help you start making God's word a part of your thinking and growing in your believing. Then the S, sustained growth through fellowship is you just show up for fellowship. It, uh, you can have the worst week ever and you drag your body to fellowship or if it's on Zoom, you drag your body to your computer, and push the Zoom thing. Now, have you guys all noticed, I know oh, you're all been in fellowship, have you noticed that you could be feeling the worst and somehow you don't even want to go to fellowship, but you make yourself go and you go and you leave feeling amazing, right? Isn't that crazy? So, and it's just kind of an easy thing to do, but it's like a little teeny thing. And I've seen over and over people that have been a part of these series, shocking changes. We've had people get physically healed. We've had people delivered from years of panic attacks and never having another one in one fellowship series. These are kind of big, giant things. People healed from, from insom insomnia who have never been able to sleep and now sleep through the night. Like amazing, miraculous things. So sustained growth through fellowship. Um, unrelenting in loving and leading people to Christ. This one might seem like, oh, but it's basically just sharing the stuff that you're hearing and, with other people. Like just trying that, just speaking it will build your believing. Um, and we'll talk about that one later too. And then the last one is, um, is sacrificial giving and serving. So a lot of times, like it really builds your believing to give God, put that as a principle in his word, like giving of your finances and you can do whatever you want with this. Nobody's going to make you do anything or make you feel bad, but these are just little things that you can try out to see what God can do. So those are our five stretch goals. What are the ones for this week? Catalina, will you read the first one, please? Get your mind blown. Kablooey. <laughs> Allow God to show you what he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Man, is that big. During the God is willing and able 15-minute meditations each day. Yeah. So first one, go kablooey. That's um, kablooey. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just, pro again, try getting on your knees for 15 minutes a day. That's 15 teensy bean. 15 minutes a day. It's like nothing. It's nothing. Come on. Like, I know it seems like just try it. Right. What have you got to lose? If it doesn't work, well, you don't get your 15 minutes back. That's the big risk there. <laughs> um, but anyway, but you know, we, I waste so much time, way more than who, who wastes many more times than 15 minutes 
a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, but just try it. It's shocking that it's revolutionary. Stay up 15 minutes later, wake up 15 minutes earlier, whatever. Just push play and listen and just see what happens. Get on your knees and see what happens. Um, yeah. And so God is willing and able helps to build that for you. Uh, yes. Oh, wait, you're going to read the second one. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So pick a red hot sizzling verse from today's teaching. Read daily and up your believing that with God, all things are possible. Boom. Boom! Yeah. So this is also a little, you pick a verse, like it's also in your app, you'll see all of the verses from the teaching. Pick one of them that you think builds your believing and just read it out loud and try being enthusiastic about it. It's really fun when you try that, like, you know? And again, don't be like, I'll feel stupid, nobody's watching. <laughs> like, you know? So why not? These are just little bitty, bitty things. What does that take you? Like, 30 seconds to read something out loud each day, right? It's super doable. Just see what happens this week. If you miss a week, nobody's going to make you feel bad. God loves you. I love you. But then you can do it the next day or later that day or something. Anyway, stretch goals, try them. But we've got exciting things for you next week with All Things Are Possible. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Nancy, for such a powerful lesson in a great Wow, what a great series. This is so awesome. I got something else in addition for you in the area of offering. Now, this is from uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 25. I'm going to jump around just a little bit here. There, uh, This is Lord Jesus talking. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? We jump down to verse 31. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For uh, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Okay, so what is Jesus, Lord Jesus saying here? Um, I feel like this really speaks for itself. Um, are you tired of worrying about like the everyday stresses of like money and not having enough of it and how are you gonna pay for things? Um, like it says it right here, that God knows what's on your heart, what stresses you out. And do you want to be set free of that? Uh, you know, in other parts of scripture, uh, Jesus, Lord Jesus says that if your faith is as tiny as a mustard seed, you can move mountains, right? All things are possible. And that includes in the area of your finances. And so if you just do an offering to God and take a, take a risk, even a small one, God will not disappoint. You're going to feel great in your heart and you're going to start to experience blessings, not always monetarily, but in other ways, you're going to experience that presence of God in a, in a big way. Okay. So I encourage you to, to pray and just take a chance. And there are three easy ways to grow in the area of giving. You can scan the QR code here on the screen with your phone. You can go on the Searchlight website under the uh, giving section or the Searchlight Fellowship app, which you've downloaded under the heart section. And there it is. Have a very powerful small group fellowship time. So excited for you guys and uh, happy new year and see you guys soon.